Selegiline is an MAO enzyme inhibitor that can increase the effects of dopamine, phenethylamine, and other drugs. It is primarily used in Parkinson's disease, but other applications for the drug have appeared. Due to its somewhat stimulant-like effects and other properties, it has occasionally been taken for nootropic and life extension purposes. The positive effects of selegiline include mood lift, increased motivation, possible cognitive enhancement, increased focus, and increased sociability. Among the possible negative effects are nausea, anxiety, aggressiveness, dry mouth, dizziness, and insomnia. The subjective effects outside of medical settings have only minimally been explored. Anecdotal reports suggest it can provide some stimulant-like and mood-enhancing effects. Claims of cognitive enhancement beyond subjective increases in focus and motivation need to be further validated. The greatest use of the drug has been in Parkinson's disease, where it can reduce symptoms and either delay or reduce L-DOPA treatment. This allows the total exposure to L-DOPA to be reduced. Selegiline's dopamine activity likely plays a role, and neuroprotection could also exist in Parkinson's patients. If neuroprotection is capable of helping, it may be useful to detect Parkinson's-related damage earlier so as to begin treatment with selegiline sooner. The other primary use for the drug is in depression, where it is normally taken transdermally. Full antidepressant effects are seen with doses of 30 to 40 milligrams per day orally, which means MAOA is also inhibited, thereby making the drug similar to other MAOIs. When you take it transdermally, intestinal MAOA is largely spared, allowing it to still be functionally selective when it comes to tyramine problems. Compared to some antidepressants, selegiline is not connected to weight gain or sexual side effects. Many studies have looked at the drug's neuroprotective and neurorestorative ability. It appears to have antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, and other functions that could help neurons in some situations. This means selegiline might be useful as a tool for minimizing acute damage, recovering from damage, and delaying the progression of neurodegenerative conditions. Some of the beneficial effects occur at doses that do not even inhibit MAOB, so doses under the current clinical range may be helpful. Various results have been seen with selegiline treatment for ADHD, Alzheimer's, and other conditions. The effect period of selegiline isn't entirely clear. Some effects may be primarily noticeable during the first few hours after dosing, but the MAO inhibition can exist for over 24 hours with a single dose. Repeated use leads to inhibition for days and even weeks depending on the length of use and the location in the body. For this reason, once daily dosing is usually adequate. Selegiline is a phenethylamine that is structurally similar to methamphetamine. The drug was originally created as Depernil, which exists as an R and S isomer. R Depernil, also known as Selegiline, is currently used. MAOB is selectively inhibited at some doses, but MAOA begins to be notably inhibited after 10 to 20 milligrams. Depending on the route of administration, you can sometimes use higher doses without inhibiting intestinal MAOA to a degree that requires dietary changes. MAOB is irreversible reversibly inhibited, meaning the enzyme is inactivated and MAOB activity is reduced until more of the enzyme is synthesized. This leads to greater dopamine and phenethylamine activity. Dopamine reuptake is inhibited to some degree, and through phenethylamine, selegiline can increase the release of dopamine. Some of the metabolites are also active. Desmethylselegiline appears to be neuroprotective, and it is a lower potency MAOB inhibitor. Both R-methamphetamine and R-amphetamine are created, but it is not clear that they really contribute to to the activity of selegiline. While they could impact dopamine and norepinephrine activity, the doses encountered through metabolism are low. It is possible that they have beneficial but not classical stimulant properties at those doses. At the least, it does not appear the production of those metabolites is a negative. For Parkinson's, 10 mg per day is used, and the effective dose for depression would be 30 to 60 mg orally. When used transdermally, 6 to 12 mg of the drug is administered each day, and when taken in a mixed oral and buccal manner, like with the Zytus tablets, around 1.25 mg is similar to 10 mg of oral selegiline. Outside of medical settings, 5 to 10 mg per day is sometimes used, though as little as 1 mg per day has been anecdotally effective for some users. 
The antidepressant activity of MAOIs was observed and investigated in the early 1950s. By the early 1960s, their use was common and more were being developed. Z. Essery synthesized Depernil in 1962, and it was called E250. That work occurred at the Chinoan Pharmaceutical Company. When it was patented and initially studied, Parkinson's was never mentioned, even though that would become its primary use. Between 1962 and 1964, Dr. Joseph Knoll developed the drug, and it was referred to as a psychic energizer. Depernil was found to be a novel MAOI antidepressant, and it was also viewed as a stimulant, likely because the early tests involved 50 to 100 milligrams. Between 1964 and 1965, Noel published the first paper on its pharmacology. There was little interest in the substance during the 1960s. Reports of the cheese effect, an adverse response with MAOIs following tyramine exposure, had begun to turn people away from MAOIs. In 1967, R. Depernil was found to be more potent, and future studies used it in place of the racemic mixture. Selegiline's role in medicine would eventually grow due to the 1968 discovery of two forms of MAO. This would provide the drug with a somewhat unique mechanism of action and explain the lack of tyramine problems. An important conference was held in Sardinia in 1971. During the event, selegiline's selective activity at MAOB was discussed, and it was connected to the drug's reduced ability to trigger hypertensive crisis. Prompted by that information, researchers viewed the drug as a potential Parkinson's disease treatment. The first study for that condition was published in 1975, and interest in that application grew during the following years. Due to those tests, it was the first MAOB inhibitor to be used in the treatment of Parkinson's. Selegiline eventually became a standard drug of choice for that condition, and other applications have been investigated. The FDA approved it for Parkinson's in 1989. Research into its neuroprotective potential grew during the 1990s. At the same time, the nootropic and life extension communities were discussing it as an antidepressant, mood enhancer, libido enhancer, cognition enhancer, and neuroprotective drug. The FDA approved selegiline in transdermal form in 2006. The drug is not controlled in the U.S., but it is prescription only. Elsewhere, it is usually prescription only or entirely uncontrolled. Selegiline's negative effects at common doses are minimal, and the suspected lethal dose is many times higher than what's used. The tyramine problem is less significant, but once you reach over 20 mg orally, a restricted diet appears necessary. Serotonin syndrome is another issue for which some potential exists, but the concern is quite low. While it is still safest to avoid using other serotonin-increasing drugs, a normal medical dose of selegiline doesn't appear to be connected to serotonin syndrome. A significant overdose syndrome has largely not been reported beyond the level of agitation, anxiety, tachycardia, and hypertension. Without combinations, fatal or life-threatening responses have not been seen. The chance of negative effects will be greater when it is combined with other stimulants and phenethylamine. You should follow a tyramine-restricted diet when also using a non-selective MAOI or a selective MAOA inhibitor. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section. In order for the drug classroom to provide more education, support is necessary. And the best way to support is through Patreon at patreon.com slash the drug classroom. You can also contribute through PayPal or Bitcoin. You can reach me on Twitter at Seth A. Fitzgerald and via email at Seth at the drug classroom.com. More information and links to references can be found on the TDC website using the link below.